Alrighty then, tonight we are deep into our Quant Traders Guide series. We are going to teach uh, about the Harmonidot HMD strategy, known by several names around here. One of our favorite trading strategies. Very, very easy to see. Welcome aboard. If it's your first time with us, make sure you smash that like button. If you want to see more into our Quant Traders Guide, make sure that you are following us over there on Facebook. And you can forget about Twitter, but here on YouTube, make sure that you are subscribed, enable those notifications so you don't miss it. This week, every night this week, we are particularly going to be hitting one of our latest and greatest strategies inside of our toolkit. Um, some housekeeping before we get started. Um, make sure that you've already downloaded the two-week free trial, got that installed on your machine so you can kind of follow along with us. Otherwise, it's going to be a little more difficult. And of course, those of you guys who are already in our program, this is going to be beneficial to you. Um, let me make sure that music is turned down just a little bit more there for me. It's a little bit loud in my ear. Hopefully, the audio, audio is okay for you guys. Let me know there in the comments if we need to make adjustments on that. I'm going to go into our guiding window here and draw up. First, I'm going to draw the strategy. We're going to show live examples and hang till the very end because around here, of course, results matter. And I'm going to show you guys what happens with our crew members, not just my results, not just some FUBU guru showing PNL, uh, uh, Photoshop PNL, or any of that kind of jargon and mess that you see with these scammers that are all over this industry. It's absolutely disgusting what's here. Welcome aboard. I hope you get a breath of fresh air as you look into our program, see the transparency that our members and our crew and myself provide to our community. Welcome aboard. Let's get right into one of our favorite strategies here with Algobox, what we oftentimes call by several names. So I wanna start right there. You will hear this strategy referred to as the HMD, the Harmonidot, if I can type right, Harmonidots or Harmonic plus Fibelidot. Okay, so a bit of a mouthful, which is why obviously we tend to just refer to this as the HMD strategy. If you see an HMD show up, that's what that is. If you hear somebody refer to it as the Harmonidot, you know what that is. It's the short term for that. And we are shortening, again, a multi confluence strategy here, which is harmonic references of structure plus Fibonacci, not just one, multi Fibonacci levels, plus an Elliott wave, plus the confluence behind our infamous Fibella dots. If you don't know what those are, hang tight here inside of this strategy, but I want you to know about this as we go into it, what we're talking about while we are drawing this up. Now, uh, again, at the you saw the the thumbnail for, for this video, and it you, you notice that we kind of highlighted the um, the high visibility. That is that is kind of, to me, one of the uh, the keys of this set of strategies. And of course, oh, let's get some of the housekeeping out of the way. Make sure, of course, you know that, look, um, you know, all the goodies, all the, all the regular stuff right there. There we go, we've covered all that. Uh, make sure you guys read that, understand that. There is risk in trading, yada, yada, yada. Okay, now, uh, drawing up in HMD, again, harmonic, plus dot, let's start with the harmonic component. Now you can see that from some of our background back here. You know, this is what a harmonic looks like on our charts. Here's one here, here's one over here. Okay, in our background of our stuff is sort of what we are known for inside of Algobox. One of the components of Algobox, again, Algobox is an all encompassing product that holds uh, many, many keys and we use Confluence to guide and enter on our positions. Tonight specifically, we're gonna show you guys how we combine the harmonics plus some of those other components. So the harmonidot, let's go to a blank screen here and uh, let's use, uh, let's do a, a green example here. Um, so if we have a harmonic that is coming out, might look something like, oops, terrible drawing here, Vinny. Let's do that again. All right. How about that? All right, looks a little bit like a 50 cent. And let's see, I think control give me the square. Here we go. All right. So on on this, this is a uh, this is a 50 cent. Don't worry about what type of harmonics these are. Again, we, we pretty much show 
the gambit you can learn a whole lot about harmonics out there on the web you can also go into deeper into our program specific ones but it it really doesn't matter the for this particular strategy we are focused in on what is called the prz over here in this box this is called the prz this will automatically be drawn for you in our system um, that box can either be three colors it will be green or red or gold okay gold means it's sort of you know red light green light system if you're driving around the united states the uh, the yellow light means get ready that means that is a harmonic that is forming in progress and we're showing you where the prz will be ahead of time if it is green then we are looking for a long reversal in that location in general and if it is red we are looking for a short in that area right so uh, in this case, it is green, but again, if it were red, the entire thing will be red, and of course, yellow, okay? Now, inside of the PRZ, what we're gonna be looking for is one of our Fibella dot entries inside of this PRZ, as simple as that, okay? So this box, again, called the PRZ, and what we are looking for is a dot. Now, that dot can be multiple colors. We have multicolor levels, go back and study in lesson uh, one through six, we will teach you all that stuff. If you're looking for those lessons, you want to kind of get a jump start on those. They can be found down in the, the description of this video that you're looking at right now. All the lessons are listed out right there for the very first free lesson set that kind of gets you started. If you're in a two-week free trial, I highly recommend that you get through those as you are going through that two-week free trial. And of course, you can execute these in real time um, along with the rest of our crew. So inside of Inside of this box, we are looking for literally a dot. Hence, this is where we we have the HMD, right? The harmonic dot. The D is for the dot that is going to show up. Now, that dot will typically be formed from um, from a multi-leg scenario. Um, and this one's a little bit tricky. This one would be like um, let's do it a different color, just because yeah, it's going to be hard to see if we don't. Uh, let's do it a little bit thicker. How about that? Can I do control? Let's zoom it. It's about as big as it'll get. Okay. So let's do... Again, I'm going to show you guys some live examples here um, in a few moments. But... Oh, that's, you know what? Let's do blue. Uh, um, I know that we are... Uh, we're going to show a power dot example anyways. So a, uh, if a blue were to show up, in fact, we know a lot of the members on our crew already know that a blue is actually one of our most powerful long signals. Blue is more powerful than a green, and bright green is more powerful than a dark green. And again, you'll learn about those things in lessons one through six on the colorings of these. But that means that there are multiple levels of confluence at this location. Now, some of the things that are absolutely required inside of a Fibella dot, obviously multi-level Fib, has to have at least two Fibonacci levels at that location, at least, at least. And yes, we can have up to 15 points of confluence inside of one of these dots. And if it's at 15, it will either be blue, like this one, or pink. Okay, so blue or pink are gonna be our most powerful dots by themselves. But what we're talking about here tonight focused in on the combination of the harmonic plus the dot. It's as simple as that. Okay, so this one is going to be a power dot blue. Um, we also must have the multifib and Elliott wave. Also must be an Elliott wave A, B, C, D of equal length. And of course, you guys can go study Elliott wave. But we are combining a lot of studies. Must be in there, but there can be other things. We've got overbought, oversold conditions, along with a myriad of other proprietary items that, um, you know, most of you guys are familiar with those studies. But what we're trying to do is build inside of our system confluence levels that give ourselves up to 15 points that's like our start of where we want to take an entry is at least 15 points of confluence before we are executing now that can be done by hand there are a lot of people out there who try um, we happen to do it very consistently we'll show you some of the results from myself and the other members here later at the end if you make it through the end of the video here with us which we hope you stay and do now inside of a scenario like this so a blue or green means that we are looking for longs okay um, let's do in this case we are we've got a green prz a green slash blue dot so we are looking for a long entry the entry is right here at the dot itself 
this will fire off now oftentimes like the the price will do pink here for price so again these are going to be bars inside of here and i'll show you these live examples but just follow with so you know price is uh, moving along this area and now we have price starting to move up and out this is what we want to see um, the entry can be, we want to get as close to that dot as possible on our entry, but oftentimes that entry ends up on price as price starts to react very, very quickly at these zones. Well, oftentimes we'll end up being here or here or just outside that box right about here. But this is the ideal is trying to get as close to that dot as possible. Okay. Now price can tend to, you know, wiggle around a little bit and whatnot, but what we're looking for is that oomph right up and out of here. But we've got so much confluence in this type of strategy that we want to try to get in right here. And we are taking this entry. Now our stop um, is going to be right here. Okay, you're thinking, what? wait, that, that seems pretty tight. That's exactly the point. Okay, on an HMD, we are getting a pinpoint entry location. If you're wondering how, you know, the success rate of our members is so much greater than those who have, you know, you see all these other programs that are out there, and I won't say programs, most of them are just education. Okay, what I call uh, regurgitation, not education. Most of them are just regurgitating stuff that's in books, and the stuff that's in the books no longer works. Uh, folks like me are classically trained as a quant to code programs that will remove retail money from them based on what they've already learned in books. So if you learned it from a book, I'm sorry, you've actually learned the opposite of what you should be trading uh, now. But that's that's another another story for another day. Watch uh, some of our other lessons and get involved with some of that if you wanna learn more. Now, some people will tend to put their stop outside this box. In my opinion, that's a mistake. Um, but on an HMD, those of you guys who are trading HMD, this is some of the common mistakes. Um, For, uh, for many of the folks who are trading this um, is the wrong stop location. Just talked with somebody even yesterday. They're trading an HMD for a very long time but did not know they thought that the stop went here. Not true, okay? Do not put that stop right there. The stop mentally should be right back behind this dot. If the dot breaks, the trade is off. Because again, on an HMD, I've got to have, not just a harmonic, like we are not just trading harmonics in here, folks. Don't just enter in on a harmonic. Unless there was a harmonic prior that was by itself, we effectively moved, plus a harmonic going the opposite direction. Then if the previous harmonic worked, the second one can also be worked. But we are not talking about that strategy. We are talking about multi-level confluence. If it's an HMD, it's an HMD, folks. So what are our rules on entering in on a dot? the same rules apply okay so that should be a key to those of you guys who have been in our crew for a while do not put your stop in the wrong location there we go I won't beat that dead horse any farther i think i have made that pretty clear okay so our stop on this is going to be right back behind that dot now you initially remember we are using atms in here okay if you don't know what that is it's not an automatic teller machine although this is the closest system on the planet that's like a money printing machine that you can get, in my opinion. Haven't seen anything better than ours. We've won three contests. Um, we're, 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 pretty, we're, we're pretty confident in standing behind that. Um, ATM, this is um, automatic trade management. Automatic trade management. Now, when we enter into our trades, it automatically is gonna put stops and targets. Um, let's go ahead and draw in some fun targets out here. Um, on, on a trade entry like this, if we are on the lowest time frame, we want a 10, we want a 15, and then a 25 plus runners, um, which again, we'll talk about that in other videos. So go into uh, lessons one through six for some of that. Actually, let's leave that there so I can control Z back. Okay, so um, stops back here, targets up there. Those, that looks a little confusing, but mm, I think you guys are gonna get it. Okay, so um, now, again, this does not necessarily have to wiggle like this. In fact, sometimes we will see trades shoot straight up and out of here. I'm going to show you guys live examples here momentarily. But your ATM is going to handle a lot of this for you. Now, by default, the reason I'm, I'm hitting, harping on this now is because the default ATM is probably going to show up to the smaller to designate that. The ATM is going to start out putting that stop down here. Now, depending on what the VIX level in the market is, can we follow the VIX very closely? We have two ATM stops by default. These are called our default ATMs. 
and this is either going to be at 25 during normal market conditions or 15 ticks as of right now. So the maximum level of risk when an ATM opens up is, and we talk about this in level detail in those lessons, I know I keep harping on those other lessons, but again, I, want, I don't want people, as I've started to do these strategies very specifically, I never wanted people to come in, watch a single video, not know that there is other stuff that builds on that. You cannot just take these from a single video, but I need to narrow these down so that you have very specific um, information on strategies once you already know what we call the core. Okay, You've got to know the core components, order of operations, and things that you will learn in lessons one through six. I'm going to harp on that right now because do not just take this video and be like, oh, well, Vinny said that, so that's what it is. This video is not all encompassing. This must be played along with the other lessons. This is gonna apply for all other strategies that you see us do, especially the rest of this week, and any very pinpoint entry location strategies that we talk about. I just wanna mention that now, so that hopefully in other videos as we go forward, that won't have to be addressed again. But people who are putting things down in the comments below, asking questions, know that a lot of that's gonna get answered in lessons one through six. Okay, long-winded as usual, let's move on. So again, this is the default. We'll come out. For us, in our ATMs here in our room with our system, this automatically comes out of the box pre-configured like this if you're using NinjaTrader 8, NinjaTrader 7, I teach you how to create that in lesson one, okay? So default is at 25 or 15. Your, uh, it is your responsibility to visibly know that our, what people will call a mental stop is right here, okay? If this dot breaks, meaning if price comes down for some reason through this area, okay, boom, where where am I closing out? Right here, okay, I want to close. Now, we're, what button are we gonna be hitting for that? We use the close button, all right? You don't need to move your stop. In fact, I recommend keeping your stops back out of the way if you're a person. There are all kinds of theories around this. I like to side on the safe side. I'm not gonna talk about my specific personal opinion on this stuff, but people who believe that their stops are hunted very specifically, you know, whatever your thought process is on that, there's all kinds of people debating that fact. Um, and I'm not gonna get into that debate here tonight. But if you wanna be on the safe side, like me, I just play it that, you know what, I leave my stop back there, I'm mentally gonna be closing out as this comes to this area. <clears throat> so that the default, my stop is way up, out of the way, not in the view and the purview of algos that are trying to hunt those stops. And I'm gonna close out this position as we break that line. Got it? Okay, so as our trade starts to progress, see how far back it's gonna let me go. Oh, I got pretty far, great. Okay, so we've got our stop entry, again, target here at 10 for our first. Um, that was good. Okay, now why 10, 15, and 25? So almost all of our systems, um, I developed this for myself. Like at the end of the day, why did I develop what we have right here? A lot of this is around my personal philosophies around trading the markets, playing the markets like a video game, getting in and out, uh, making consistent um, chunks of money uh, progressively, and then we're kind of chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, hitting home runs. I'm not relying on my big money winners, um, on my big runners to make that money. I want to consistently take home 10 and 15 ticks. Okay, you guys got that? So 10 and 15 ticks, again, other things that I will harp on in those other lessons, but know that 10 and 15 is kind of our default, de facto spot of our uh, taking profits. Those are in ticks, 10 and 15 ticks. If you don't know what that is, you need to go study you know, futures in previous videos as well. I know I'm harping on a lot of that, but just know that I get so many questions specifically around these that I wanna hit them ahead of time. Now, we have a secondary set of ATMs that what we call a large, um, ATM 15 and 25 ticks for targets one and targets two. This will depend upon what time frame this structure and this setup strategy shows up on. The reason I sold that down in my speech is because the time frame. If this comes in on, um, again, what we use around here are called algo bars. Okay. If this shows up on a level one, okay, that's our lowest time frame. Level two, I'm gonna give some of our common ones.
Okay, against algal bars, these are it. This is this is our core levels one, two, three, fives, and eights. So, if one of these um, shows up on this set here, let's do this in, in blue here. So, on a level one or two, okay, I am looking for the ten and fifteen. If this lands on a three. Eh, it can be either one, okay? Take your pick. Depends on other things that are going on the market. However, if one of these shows up on a five or an eight, okay, I definitely want to be taking the 15 or the 25. So you might be asking, well, how do I do that on the fly? Very, very easy. With our system, you're already going to have created two sets of ATMs, okay? ATM set one we call and refer to as the small and of course no rocket science here large very simple right we're either looking for a big trade or a small trade small or large that's it okay so um, larger time frames five and eights I'm looking for my default which means by the way I'm skipping a 10 I'm not trying to take 10 ticks out of a trade if I'm taking this off of a five or an eight that's coming in. Okay, higher time frames, that means bigger moves, etc. Okay. As far as a dot, everything else stays the same. We don't change the strategy on the stop for that. The um, the dot sizes are relative. So same stuff. If it breaks that dot, we're closing it out. Now does that let's talk about re-entries in just a moment, okay? We can re-enter, so hang tight for that, we'll talk about it, okay? I wanna make sure you guys understand this. Again, algo bars are the bar types that we are primarily showing for entries. We do not enter on other bar types most of the time. There are exceptions to that. Two Finger Salute is an example, maybe a J-hook. Um, there are others in there, but in general, these are our entry time charts, and this is uh, based on customized bar types, all right? So, Algo bars, level two and three, definitely small. Three can be questionable. You know, I, I kind of default to going small, and if I see the speed of the market, the VIX is higher, comes in on a three, I will move out my 10 target out to a 25. It's very, very simple, right? In fact, <clears throat> I kind of call this my, my default ATM, right? I could use this all day long because how easy is it to grab the tag of target one? Whoops, I got that one. Yeah, I can grab the tag of target one and I can simply move it out, right? It doesn't have to be exactly to 25, but approximately, right? I can literally grab it and be like, nope, I think this one is going to go a little bit farther. So oftentimes if this comes in on a level three, I'll just move that target out, right? I'd be like, eh, I'm gonna try it, right? And I can always close out the trade here if something just doesn't look right. You, you know that on the fly, um, you know, Tom Dante teaches something called um, evolving R. And we have that same concept in here where as the trade evolves, the risk reward evolves along with it as the trade develops, right? And we're looking to maximize that, which you'll learn in your final 40 days. Again, we have a 120 day program divided up into four uh, to three sections of 40. But in the final 40 days, we, f we talk about maximizing those winners and that's more important there. But I wanna teach the core right now, okay? So if you're having to pick, if you're gonna be having small or large, I tend to stay with small and then I just adjust on the fly. Okay, so you could literally, if you wanted down to one ATM, if, you're, if you didn't want to have two, you want to simplify things, my suggestion is just have this one, okay? Because you can always grab the 10, move it out. You got it? Everybody got that? Excellent, just move it out. Okay, um, let's see how far back it's gonna let us go here. All right, so we got our small and our large ATM. You guys follow all of that. Now, we want to chunk away that 10 and 15 on a regular basis. Now, let's talk about what happens if price breaks down, okay, boom, and I close out the trade. So if I close out this trade right here, um, again, on our button types, uh, button colors, you will see and be using the blue button. So I'll, I'll uh, put a, a blue line right here to represent a a manual closure, okay, which should be a small loss. Again, our average loss, stop losses around here on average are six to eight ticks. And of course, we've already talked about, you know, what our default targets are. And of course, the shared target between these two is 15. So we have a very, very common target of 15 ticks for most of our trade styles in here, 
okay? So we're closing out right here manually. Boom, the trade is over. However, if this trade stays inside of this harmonic, all right, then starts to move back up in our direction, which, you know, how often that can happen sometimes, right? Thing starts to go. I can try this again, right? I can take another swing at this, no problem whatsoever. Keep the same stop though, folks. If you're going to re-enter, okay? So we're talking about re-entry rules now. If price starts to come back up and in it, sure. You can take two swings, but folks, we're not doing three strikes, you're out, okay? You do not take a third swing. If it does not work the second time, it's over, done. Move on, look for another trade, look at another instrument, look for another HMD on another instrument. Something's going on in that area. We don't need to play guessing games with it. Um, you can also wait for SMLK timings, which you'll learn in our other videos, but right now, focusing in on the HMD. It is no longer an HMD if that dot pops, right? At that point, you're looking for the harmonic to maybe play out for that structure, and you really wanna have some other things going for you on this trade. You need to have some other reason why you wanna get long here. Uh, definitely don't wanna be trading against the MACV filter. You don't wanna be trading against the favorable direction. Two major things, and of course, again, I'm harping on it, but down in lessons one through six. So check those out, make sure you know those and, and learn it as you go, okay? There we go, this is how the trade works. I've drawn it out. Now let's look at some live examples. Where are we at? We're about 25 minutes into the video here, so let's move right along and let's pull in uh, how you can go and see some live examples in our room. If you're not in our Discord room, you're gonna be a little bit lost on this, so make sure you are inside of our Discord chat um, here on the left, the main menu for looking for where we communicate here in the public lobby, there's your main chat that most people are located looking for. But if you want to find these strategies, you need to scroll down and there's premium member section and down here is education. Okay, so in the education section, you'll be looking for these labeled strat. Okay, and in the ones for tonight, we're looking at the Strat Harmona Dot and the HMD. There are two sections for that at some point when you probably need to combine those, but because they're referred to as both, you can go and find those in here, the live examples that we've got. So this is what one of those looks like in real time. Inside of here, you can see, let's see, there is a, let's see, a 50 cent is in there, but this one particularly looks like it is inside of a cipher. Um, and maybe potentially a shark as well. So this is a multi harmonic, which you'll learn that in some other videos, but um, there are multiple PRZs going on here, but just the one, the final one there, it, it, there is actually just one, so that's good. This is just a, it is a cipher. Um, I know these are layered on top of each other, and it's a, probably should have looked at this example specifically before I got in. There might be two. Oh no, the second one is forming. Okay, so uh, speaking of that, so th there is a PRZ right there that is not formed yet. Remember I told you guys before on, if you see a golden one, you'll learn this in our other videos, there is one setting up. There's going to be a PRZ right there at 2924, again, ahead of time. This is something that no other um, system out there has. I don't wanna, I mean, there might be, but not that I'm aware of. All right, uh, so here we go. Inside of our PRZ, got the box, and what do I see? Got that dot right in there. I'm using the terribly wrong colors for this. So there's my PRZ, there's that dot. Whoops, just bam, okay. So green and green, pretty easy. Now, some of the more advanced questions, I probably should answer this earlier, if you have a harmonic that is green, but you get a red dot, an opposing signal color inside, which one do you take? By default, you go with the color of the dot, okay? Write it down. Go with the color of the dot. This particularly applies to something called the diamond dot strategy. If there is a diamond harmonic, and uh, always, I mean, it's one of the most powerful ones that we've got if those are combined, but if you get a diamond plus a dot, it doesn't matter if the dot, if the diamond is green, if that dot is red, we're looking for a short, okay? Red is short, green is long, blue is short, pink, I'm sorry, blue is long, pink is short. 
Um, okay, that's <laughs> confusing enough. Okay, good. Um, as we see on this one, great example. I mean, price just absolutely rockets out of here. Nice little setup right there. Makes it very, very easy. You know, from our um, from our thumbnail, highly visible. Uh, I reiterate that this is they are v very very easy to see right um, you could literally start trading this tomorrow install our system if one of these shows up you take the entry right very very easy green and green you're going long green and red if it's a red dot you're going short pretty pretty easy right all right so there is there's one uh, there's one live example there are many um along here let's look at one that's kind of got a little gif in in action here let's see if we can get this big enough can you guys see that okay uh, let's zoom in a little bit farther it might get a little grainy hopefully you guys can see this go okay so there we go this one starts out there's the there's the prz box and we've got that green dot inside of it see how it starts right there boom Price is starting to move up. Now price moved down a little bit. See how it wiggles a little bit on this one? Again, it doesn't always have to do that, but this example is one of those where price did, didn't just go straight up and out of there, and that can happen. Wiggle, wiggle. Um, you'll also see like there are things going on here as I was taking this trade where I was adding to position. Looks like I start out with a small uh, six contract position. I go to eight to get to 10. Uh, does not look like I added any further, so that was up to uh, up to 10 contracts as we added in on that one. Now this one also has some other points of confluence. Those of you who have been around our system for a while, you can see we've got some Flowmaster crosses showing up along with, that is a double timing line right there, right? It's double king vertical for our timing lines. So beautiful trade came in right there. The thing that made this very easy to see, the first thing you see that shows up, we got that HMD, then we add Flowmaster, another Flowmaster comes in there, we get a nice big, big push up and out of there. Multi-targets filled on that HMD entry and we're punching it long. Now, some of the things you'll notice on this one, order of operations, we've got longs favorable. Over here on the right, what color is my Mac V? Green. Right? What color is my algal matrix? Also, show me primarily green. Okay, these are, this is more the advanced stuff. Other things that you're looking for to build into confluence as you're taking a trade. That was a nice looking setup right there. HMD for the entry. Targets, t -t 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 targets filled. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Um, let me see what happens if I do open originals. You get bigger? Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, this one is a little bit trickier. I like uh, I like that we're getting this example here. So I don't think I can pause this GIF. Can I pause a GIF? No, not on this one. Um, I will. Uh, I'm going to click my drawing tool when it hits. Okay. So first thing, you'll notice what color is the PRZ box on this one? Notice it's not green this time. Okay. This one is still developing, and the dot showed up ahead of time. Doesn't matter. Okay. You get my point. The PRZ structure, having that structure there is what matters, then a dot inside of it. We don't care the color, right? Color agnostic, um, you know, we want, once it's formed, we want, you know, the, the bias is to the long side on this one particularly. We've got longs favorable. I've got MACV in our favor. You know, great trade setup coming in here, but the HMD is what we want to take for our pinpoint entry location. Again, easy spot to see. There it is, okay? Um, let it play through. Here we go. Another one that allows us some additional confluence as it develops, the trade does come back, pops. You notice this was a break. You notice how it broke that, but we got the crosses coming in there. So I went ahead and held this. This is a little bit more of an advanced one, but I'm taking that first entry off of the HMD. Pierces comes through, but now we have a PRZ cross and a nice, uh, nice set of trades right there on this one. And we end up taking off, you know, up, up and away. Great, great. Uh, little little trade right there. Um, there are a lot of other examples. Um, we're right here at 30 minutes. Don't want to, you know, take too long on these. But these are some great examples you can come check out on the HMDs. A couple more that I wanted to show. Um, here is one with a blue. Oh shoot! There we go. Come back. All right. Uh, can I zoom in on that? No. Let's click on Open Original. Make it easier. There we go. All right. So look at that. That's a beauty. This one is, you know, power dot, blue dot. Look at the power of the blue, okay? If you start to see the color change, if it's not green, you know, I said earlier, blue is more powerful. One shows up like this. I mean, look at the results, right? You can 
just see that massive massive move up and out of there easy peasy beautiful spot right there to show up HMD that's a blue uh, that's so that's a HMD power dot on that one right there you'll hear us refer to that as a power dot all right um, combos all right C -c 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 combo kill all right you know guys know how I like to use um, gaming references specifically with our tool sets um, does this one have uh, this one's not an HMD though so we'll save this for another day okay it's a headshot but not uh, not an HMD what about this one is this an HMD mm. No. Okay. Um, so that's it, folks. Um, let me show you some results, right? If you held to, through to the end here, let's take a peek at some results uh, from today. We're the 28th. Um, let's come through into our results section here. And let's go and see what we've got here today. It's from the 28th. Yes. Okay. Um, scroll back. Date is this one. Make sure I don't want to show you guys different days. Yep. Okay, that's from today as well. Okay, here we go. Yeah, July 28th. Thanks, CG, for copying these over into this area. All right, so Central Lamb trading on our strategies here, posted his results here today. $4,800. Very nice. 57% profit. Let's take a peek at that profit factor. 1.99. So winners, almost two times the size of the losers. Great stuff there. Uh, Matt's posting his. Let's zoom into his results there. We've got profit factor 23. Holy shnikes. Wow, he crushed it today. 93.75% for him today. $2,200. Oh my word. Massive, amazing work there. 16 trades today for, for Matt. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, that looks like a different date rate. Oh, I think that's default, but I believe that's still for his today's. I'll have to I'll check with him on that one. But still, great results. 93. Holy shnikes. Amazing work, sir. Um, missed the end of the cell. It was awesome. David Lowe. That was the same one. Okay, Derek. Uh, thank you for explaining it, for creating Flowmaster. I'm very grateful. This is my day for today. Thank you, Derek, for that. Thanks. 4,000 made his 4K target today. Excellent work. Uh, make sure you flip that to currency so we don't have... Uh, oh, no, this is. Never mind. Um, forty-eight percent profitable doesn't sound. Everybody, you know, we get trolled a lot for being like, oh, well, it's just a pro. Yeah, but your percent profitable isn't very high. It doesn't matter when your profit factor is three point three nine and your winners are, you know, three times the size of your losers. Doesn't matter. That's why those two need to be combined, folks. Four K in a day on uh, three profit factor. If you don't know how good that is, yeah, you need to you need to learn your stats. Leanne, how'd she do today? We've got 13.75, excellent work. 85% profitable, holy shnikes. 99 profit factor. So basically, if you're wondering what that profit factor is, 99, that means that basically she really didn't take any loss. That means that her stops were at her break even point. So you're basically talking about minus commissions. Excellent work there, Leanne, taking down 1,300 on a day, not bad. CG, my right hand man, 20.75. I don't mean $20.75, if you know what I'm saying. Holy shnikes, profit factor 56, 85%, basically the same thing. He's getting a lot of just break-evens on his. <laughs> basically, no no loss at all. I mean, max drawdown, $37 to make two grand. Nice work there, sir. 85% on uh, on those. Awesome work. The others were, the 15% were like break-evens. Amazing. Amazing work. Sting Ox, he says now he's done. I guess he must have posted several times there today. $3,350, awesome. 100% profitable. 100% today for Sting Ox, excellent work. Uh, let's see, KC, he's got, uh, looks like he's practicing in his sim account, making 6K in his live account, 1,900. KC, absolutely smashing it. Let's, uh, your results okay so he's co combined results 90 percent profitable profit factor 10.73 amazing work there kc um matt ended up closing the day at 4k even better holy shnike so he got better toward the end of the day michael g how did michael g do he's trading micro 67 bucks that's all right the percent profitable 70 percent profit factor 3.45 that 
is amazing, amazing work. So it doesn't matter. Small accounts, large accounts, doesn't matter if you're trading with a $500 account or you know 5,000 or 50,000. Um, you know, our the profitability, the consistency, the precision of the strategies is what matters. All right, Mr. Tomorrow, multiple PRZs could be a setup for a lot more selling tonight. All right, and how'd you do today? 5K, 5,400, profit factor 1.34, 40%, nice work, 1.34 on that profit factor. Loving it. Central Lamb, $2,025. I mean, look, we could just go through all these all day. Profit factor three, man, you guys absolutely <laughs> smashed it. You guys are killing it. Excellent, excellent work. All right, I hope you guys learned a lot about the HMD strategy. Thanks for hanging out here tonight with me. Um, I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow. Don't forget, Friday is the last day that we are doing the Ninja Trader 7 stuff. The lifetime access stuff is going away. The lifetime price will literally be the yearly price. So if you want to get involved with us, Friday is that last day. That's August the 1st, 2020. Ninja Trader 8, our new channel, is going to be devoted to showing you guys the Ninja Trader 8. You know, you guys have been seeing for the last four years Ninja Trader 7 on my systems, all the stuff we've been doing. We'll be showing you guys in NT8. You guys got the beta. You guys can go install that. There is a 40 day trial there on that beta. You guys know the drill while we're doing that. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out for me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Curtis G, and the rest of the gang. I'm sending out the big H town. See ya.